Magnesium, the emergency medicine channel. Today let us discuss about one of the important drug induced problem that is Neuroleptic Malignant Syndrome or NMS. NMS is a neurological emergency where the syndrome is associated with uh, altered mental status, rigidity, fever, hyperthermia, dysautonomia, secondary to the use of neuroleptic agents that we will see what is this neuroleptic agents afterwards. We can have same problem in serotonin syndrome, we can all have almost similar problem in tetanus, but we will differentiate how, uh, what are the uh, problems in each condition and we can make a diagnosis of NMS. Mental changes are one important problem in neuroleptic malignant syndrome, whereas if you take tetanus, these mental problems are not there. Tetanus, you can have rigidity, high degree fever, all these things, but uh, uh, most of the time patients are conscious oriented. Agitated, delirium, confusion, catatonic signs, mutism, encephalopathy like features, coma, all these things can be there in mental changes, but most of the patients come with altered behavior, coma like that. Rigidity is another important type of uh, problem in NMS. Uh, you get lead pipe rigidity throughout uh, all the limbs, throughout the moments, you get lead type of uh, rigidity. Uh, tremors uh, can sometimes present in patients. Uh, patient also can have dysautonomia, uh, opisthotonus, trismus, chorea, other dyskinesias. So, al uh, altered behavior, rigidity. Second problem is rigidity. Third one is high fever, hyperthermia. Temperature more than 38 degrees Celsius is very typical in neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Some patients can have very high temperature more than 40 degrees Celsius. There is a third important problem. So, altered behavior, rigidity, hyperthermia. Fourth problem is autonomic dysfunction. So, in ICU, if you admit these patients, you can monitor the patients and you can see the patient will have tachycardia, bradycardia, hypotension, hypertension, various type of uh, uh, combinations you can get in this type of patients. Now, we will see what is the pathogenesis of uh, uh, NMS. It is a dopamine blockage uh, uh, occurring in the nerve endings. That is a main problem. Uh, this class of agents like neuroleptic drugs, uh, dopamine receptor blockage is the uh, most important theory behind the pathogenesis of NMS. Central dopamine receptor blockage in the hypothalamus may cause hyperthermia and other signs of dysautonomia. You can see the other uh, signs we already discussed the signs patient can have high fever, patient can have tachycardia, hypertension or sometimes bradycardia and hypotension that is due to dysautonomia. Uh, common other presenting signs and symptoms patient is delirious, altered behavior, uh, coma and uh, sometimes uh, patient can sometimes have seizure also. Rigidity is one important sign, lead pipe uh, rigidity is classical. But if it is associated with tremors, then it can be cogwheel also, but mostly it is lead pipe rigidity. Other associated findings like autonomic instability like tachycardia, hypertension, increased sweating, some part of the chest and bradycardia or hypotension, other types of uh, tremors, uh, movement disorders. Uh, dilated people is one important thing, it can differ, it is a it is not a sign of NMS, but it can differentiate one another important problem that is serotonin syndrome that mimics uh, NMS uh, dilated people is classically seen in uh, serotonin syndrome, whereas in uh, NMS it is normal people. Now, we will see the drugs which can produce uh, uh, NMS, neuroleptic agents like uh, adipiraprazole, uh, chlorpromacin, clozapine. Uh, haloperidol, lansepine, uh, kitepin, uh, respiridone. These are the common drugs we use uh, in our clinical practice. They can produce neuroleptic uh, uh, malignant syndrome. Antiemetic drug like domperidone, not very common. Uh, metaclopramide so can sometimes pr produce uh, abnormal uh, movement disorders. Uh, Promethazine is another drug which is very commonly uh, present with uh, NMS. Anti Parkinson medicine withdrawal that is also sometimes produce uh, uh, NMS. 
So, so many other drugs also there in the chart, but uh, first category is very important. They are called as neuroleptic agents. Now, once we diagnose uh, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, like a patient had history of uh, some uh, antipsychotic drug or antiemetic, suddenly patient come with altered behavior, rigidity, high degree fever, then we have to suspect neuroleptic malignant syndrome. One important uh, lab investigation is creatinine kinase. Creatinine kinase is highly elevated. It is a muscle enzyme. Whenever there is a rhabdomyolysis, CK can be elevated. It can be in thousands, like uh, 1000 to uh, 1 lakh. So, that much elevation can be there. That uh, uh, that type of rhabdomyolysis, if you do not treat well with uh, fluids, patient can develop renal failure. So, creatinine kinase is one important investigation uh, which can tell you uh, patient is having uh, NMS or not. Well, there are uh, differential diagnosis for elevated CK, like patient can have elevation in uh, CK in polymyositis. Uh, uh, other types of uh, acute inflammation also you can get, but this much high with altered behavior, rigidity is classical of NMS. Electrolyte imbalance, hyperkalemia is one important problem because patient is having severe rhabdomyolysis, so hyperkalemia is important problem. Then metabolic acidosis, hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia, hypernatremia. Hypernatremia is mainly due to fluid loss, high degree fever, patient can lose lo lot of fluid that produces hypernatremia. Rhabdomyolysis is mainly due to the uh, myoglobinuria because of uh, uh, myoglobinuric, uh, sorry, rhabdomyolysis uh, is mainly seen in uh, NMS and it produces renal failure. The uh, myoglobinuric acute renal failure is very classically seen in uh, NMS. Other tests like we can do CT or MRI if the patient is having altered behavior, we, we want to have a differential diagnosis like encephalitis, meningitis, we can do MRI with contrast. Otherwise, MRI and CT is not required in NMS as such. EEG can be done to rule out status ep uh, non-convulsive epilepsy because some patients will have uh, non-convulsive epile status epilepticus, they can have altered behavior, muscle rigidity elevated CK, all these things can be there. So, EEG is a one important investigation which which will rule out uh, uh, this um, uh, uh, status epilepticus. Now, we will see what is the management. Whenever we patient come to emergency room, we have to take care of patient's airway, breathing, circulation because this patient can have breathing difficulty, muscle rigidity is there, hypoxemia can occur and patient can have high degree fever, lot of fluid loss, hypotension, all these things can be there. So, we have to take care of its uh, airway, breathing and circulation. Then discontinue the medicine, whatever medicine he is taking, whatever uh, drugs he is taking for uh, like vomiting or uh, antidepressive medicine, all these things should be immediately uh, stopped because we will not be knowing what medicine is causing this problem. And reduce the temperature by uh, giving paracetamol, cooling blankets. So normally, paracetamol will not work in NMS because uh, the mechanism of fever is different. So, there will be mild, mild reduction in fever, but uh, we can try for cooling blankets, ice water, uh, 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 gastric lavage, ice packs in the axilla, all these things we can try. Clonidine can be tried in a uh, patient who is having high BP. Uh, because uh, uh, this uh, uh, this is an autonomic dysfunction induced uh, uh, hypertension and tachycardia. So, clonidine can be tried there. Benzodiazepine, lorazepam can be tried if the patient is having agitation or altered behavior. You can sedate the patient with benzodiazepines. And fluid re resuscitation is very important because most of these patients will have severe uh, volume loss and they can have hypotension, shock, renal failure rhabdomyolysis induced renal failure, all these things the treatment of choice is IV fluids. So, you can start normal saline as a crystalloid, we can start normal saline 20 ml per kg and try to Im improve the uh, uh, fluid status, we can check the IVC, we can check uh, renal output. So, fluid maintenance is very important. Again, creatinine kinase elevated uh, due to rhabdomyolysis and that induced renal failure, treatment is volume resuscitation. Urine alkalinization also can be helpful in patients who is having rhabdomyolysis. Now, patients with uh, uh, altered behavior uh, and uh, all this problem, we have to give heparin to prevent deep vein thrombosis. 
So low molecular weight heparin or heparin should be started in patients who are admitted in ICU because the recovery may be slightly prolonged. So we have to give heparin or low molecular weight heparin to prevent deep vein thrombosis. Now one important drug which can reduce the temperature in NMS is bromocriptin. Ideal drug is dandrolin but it is not available in most of the centers. So dandrolin dose is uh, 0.25 mg per kg to 2 mg per kg IV. Uh, every 6 hours that is a dose of uh, dandrolin but this drug is not available in many centers but bromocriptin is widely available drug it is a dopamine antagonist 2.5 mg uh, QID that is every 6 hourly we have to give 2.5 mg this bromocriptin that can control the uh, fever uh, temperature in NMS so this is an ideal drug should be used but uh, according to textbooks it is second line drug but in our country, this drug is widely available, so we should use uh, bromocriptin to control the temperature. Other important issues, we already discussed that patient can have severe dehydration that should be corrected. Electrolyte imbalance uh, like hyperkalemia should be corrected fast, otherwise cardiac arrhythmias can occur. Renal failure should be corrected with uh, uh, fluids because it is rhabdomyolysis induced renal failure. Cardiac arrhythmias are mainly because of uh, electrolyte imbalance. Torsadis point is can be there, magnesium sulfate is a treatment, myocardial infarction can be there because uh, severe dehydration can induce stroke, myocardial infarction. Again volume expansion is the better treatment. Cardio myopathies can occur because of tachycardia uh, or autonomic dysfunction. Respiratory failure can occur because of chest fall rigidity, deep vein thrombosis, thrombocytopenia, DIC. That's why we are giving heparin in these patients. Uh, seizures can occur in some patients, hepatic failure, sepsis, all these things are complication of uh, NMS. So all these things also should be tackled along with your main, main, main line of treatment. Now, restarting of neuroleptic, uh, ne uh, neuroleptic uh, drugs, uh, it, is, it should not be done in emergency room. We have to wait uh, at least two weeks uh, before starting the treatment. Uh, and we have to use the drugs, we have to select the drugs which may not uh, produce NMS, slowly start the dose, uh, avoid lithium along with whatever we are giving. Uh, dehydration should not be there in patients who is having uh, history of um, NMS and look for elevation in the creatinine kinase uh, at least once in 3 days. Now, one of the important differential diagnosis we have already told that uh, uh, that is uh, Serotonin syndrome. Uh, this is uh, caused by selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Uh, it is also have similar features of uh, uh, NMS, but uh, one important finding what you do not get in NMS is midriasis, dilated people. Other one is clonus, hyperreflexia, clonus, clonus midriasis, uh, and bowel sounds are hyperactive. But NMS, all these things are reversed, hyperreflexia normal people decreased or normal uh, bowel sounds. So, that is also very important. Uh, so, we have to differentiate these two conditions uh, properly. Malignant hyperthermia is another condition caused by succinyl calling. So, we are not discussing that part here, but that also produces almost similar finding. Severe hyperthermia, muscle uh, rigidity, dysautonomia, all these things can be produced by malignant hyperthermia it is a it is produced by a anesthesia agent that is succinyl choline so these are the differential diagnosis we already discussed uh, malignant uh, ma other differential diagnosis malignant catatonia tetanus withdrawal of uh, intrathecal baclofen when that tetanus is very important because tetanus will have almost all features of nms except altered behavior. Tetanus, most of the tetanus patients, they have full consciousness throughout the treatment. So, we can differentiate between tetanus and NMS uh, uh, clinically itself. Uh, lab wise, it will be very difficult to identify whether it is tetanus or NMS. Treatment is antibiotic. In tetanus, the treatment is antibiotic. Penicillin or uh, metronidazole is the treatment of choice. Now, this chart tells you uh, the differences between various conditions like serotonin syndrome, 
ஆன்டி கால்னர்ஜிக் சின்ரோம் நியூரோலெப்டிக் மேலிக்னன்ட் சின்ரோம் மேலிக்னன்ட் ஹைப்பர் தர்மியா அண்ட் லுக் அட் த பியூப்புள் தட் இஸ் வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் இன் செரட்டானின் சின்ரோம் அண்ட் ஆன்டி கால்னர்ஜிக் சின்ரோம் பீப்புள்ஸ் ஆர் லார்ஜ் வேர் ஆஸ் இன் என்எம்எஸ் இட் இஸ் நார்மல் தட் இஸ் ஒன் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் க்ளூ விச் கேன் டெல் யூ தட் திஸ் இஸ் என்எம்எஸ் பட் ரெஸ்ட் ஆஃப் த திங்ஸ் யூ கேன் ரீட் ஃப்ரம் த சார்ட் ஐம் நாட் டிஸ்கஸிங் ஆல் திஸ் திங்ஸ் வி ஹவ் டிஸ்கஸ்ட் அபவுட் ஒன் ஆஃப் த ரேர் பட் வெரி இம்பார்ட்டண்ட் ட்ரக் இன்ட்யூஸ்ட் ப்ராப்ளம் மெனி அ டைம்ஸ் வி ஆர் மிஸ்ஸிங் இட் வி மே நாட் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் வெதர் இட் இஸ் என்எம்எஸ் ஆர் சம்திங் எல்ஸ் Uh, patient can have uh, after neuroleptic drugs like psychiatric drugs uh, anti parkinson drugs they develop uh, severe muscle rigidity elevated ck rhabdomyolysis renal failure altered behavior coma convulsions then high degree fever uh, and dysautonomia dysautonomia in icu can present with tachycardia bradycardia hypertension hypotension increased sweating Uh, we can use alpha blockers with beta blockers as a treatment for this one labetalol is a very good drug if the patient is having uh, uh, tachycardia hypertension uh, all these things labetalol can uh, act as a very good drug because it has got both alpha blocking activity and beta blocking activity thank you